Hi everyone, and my name is Jane, and welcome to my channel, Loopy Mabel's Closet, where I'm sharing with you my journey towards making a handmade wardrobe. So in this video, it's about the top that I'm wearing. So if you'd like to find out all about it, then I'll see you very soon. So welcome back everybody and if you're very new here please I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button if you hit the notification bell then you'll never miss out on any videos that I do bring out. So today's video is this lovely top that I've just made fresh off the sewing machine literally last night so I wanted to share it with you today. I've made it in conjunction with the hashtag sew a top which was set by Claire over on Penguin on Pear and it literally was just to sew a top and share it by the end of August. So I'm just getting mine in in time. So the top, well, the top is by Peppermint Magazine and it's in conjunction with In The Falls and it's the ruffle sleeve top. So I'll just show you a picture of the top, the diagram of the top. Hope you can see that okay. And it's just a straightforward V-neck top with ruffle sleeves and two bust starts. So you just go onto Peppermint Magazine website and there's loads of free PDF patterns that you just choose and just download, print them off and then off you go and you can create. And this is skill level one and a half to two. So I thought this would be really simple to make in no time at all. Well, it was simple to make. It but it took me longer than that I thought it would do because I think it uses, well, it recommended you use the French seam method. Now, I didn't use the French seam method when I made this. So, because the instructions were for the French seam method, I had to like read and double read and make sure I was doing my version the right way. The instructions are in there if you are just going to do the non-French seam method like I did but I just had to make sure that what I was doing was right so that took me a little bit longer but I really thought I'd have it done in a few hours because it just you know it's just a straightforward top with some ruffles on the sleeves v-neck but because it's got the facings inside and I shall show you some of the diagrams I just thought it was a little bit, there's some of the diagram of the facings. I just thought it was a little bit fiddly and it's probably not how I would have done the facings. I'm not sure. Mm, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I, I followed the pattern to the letter and I did it exactly as it said. I just thought it was a little bit fiddly and a little bit confusing or maybe it was just me. I did lengthen the top. I didn't because the length of the pattern comes to on your just about your hip, your hip bone and I just wanted mine to be a little bit longer than that. I'm not keen on short um, on tops that are too short. So I lengthened it and I used a simple method. I got a piece of A4 paper, folded it in half and that's how much I lengthened it by and I just attached that to both the front and the back. And on the pattern instructions there is the um, the line where you can lengthen or shorten it. So I just followed that, really simple, and I just lengthened it by the width of half an A4 piece of paper. So that was really simple. I made a note on the back of the instructions, which is good because you've got like, um, like an information sheet at the back, and then you just add any notes that you've changed or you've edited or what did you find was a success or what you're most proud of, is anything you would do differently next time, uh, adjustments if you made any, and I just thought that was really useful. So I did do a few different things, obviously, to the pattern. So I lengthened the pattern and I also did my version of stitching it. I didn't use any French seams at all. So 
I made the size recommended. It did say if you're in between sizes, go up a size. So I was in between sizes, so I did size F. And it has come out quite roomy. The darts are like are about right, but it is quite roomy here. So I probably could have got away with doing the next size down, um, maybe for next time. Um, but I'm really pleased because I do struggle with sleeves because I, I do have quite, let's say, chunky arms and I do struggle with sleeves fitting me. And I thought this may be um, too tight on the arms, but no, it's absolutely fine, enough room. And I've got a long sleeve top on underneath and it's gone on really well. So I've made a note on the back of the pattern sheet that the sleeves fit me perfectly. So if I did make it again, I possibly would go down a size, um, but I may keep the sleeves at size F just for my chunky arms. So if you're wondering about the fabric I've used, it is vintage bark cloth, which I had in my fabric stash for years. We're talking 20, 15 to 20 years, possibly. There, it used to be a pair of curtains that my Nana gave me. So, and my Nana has been in heaven now for quite a few years and at least 15, 20 years now I've had this fabric and I never used it because I didn't think it was enough enough to do anything with. Um, but so it's like two curtains, one was longer than the other. I don't, I think she had these in her pantry, her old pantry that she used to have. And I've still got a little bit left and I'll just show you. It's still got the brass curtain rings that she stitched on. She made these curtains and it's still got the brass rings on the top. So when I was cutting it out yesterday, it, it, it made me smile because I thought, oh, I thought of my Nana and her stitches are still there on the brass rings. So I, I didn't want to cut them off, but I don't know what I'm going to do, do with it. My husband suggested maybe incorporating the rings in the blouse somehow, but I'm not sure, but I will, I will keep these rings and uh, maybe um, there's enough fabric for me to maybe make a headband or a liner bag. I could possibly line my basket, my handbag, which is like a basket handbag, enough to line that. Or maybe make a raggy brooch. Um, so there is a fair bit left. So I will make something with it. So really this top Obviously, I've done the challenge, but it also works really well in the So Frugal 19 challenge that the lovely JJ from the Camden Stitches created, So Frugal 19. So you can see that hashtag over on Instagram. That's still running, that hashtag. So if you want to go and have a look and see what it's all about, you can see it all over there. Um, so yeah, so I've used an old pair of curtains, bark cloth curtains, and I've used a free PDF pattern that I've downloaded. So the only cost for me to make this top is obviously the electricity on my sewing machine and the sewing thread. So this has turned out to be a real upcycle or recycle frugal sewing project. So I am quite pleased with myself. I used, um, I didn't have enough, I didn't think I'd have enough to do the facings in this. And I also thought that by adding the facings in this fabric, because it is quite a thick fabric, that it might make the top a little bit too rigid and a little bit too sturdy. Um, so I used some quilting cotton fabric that I had to do the facings and I shall show you it on the bale here. I've still got lots left on the bale. So I used that fabric. I thought it coordinated quite well and because it's only a light quilting cotton I thought that wouldn't make it too bulky so I used that. And another thing I added to the top was my own pockets because I do like to have a pocket. So I shall just show you the, if you can see, sorry, I have to stand up and show you. I made some little pockets there and I used the same fabric to line the pockets with. So I've got two pockets. So that was another adjustment I made. 
and I'm happy with the length and I'll show you some pictures of me swanning about in the garden and I'm really pleased with it. It's true vintage style. I love the floral, I think they are hydrangeas, I think, if you can tell what they are. I'm sure the hydrangeas, if you think they're not and there's something else, please let me know in the comments box below. Um, and I'm really pleased, I really do love it. Yeah, so this is gonna get really well worn in the autumn and winter, definitely. And this is the second item of clothing that I've made incorporating some old curtains. I do have another video. I'll put the details up here somewhere on my revamp of my Carson dress and I revamped the bodice because I wasn't very happy with it and I put some Sanderson curtain material on that. So this is my second upcycle curtain sewing project so I'm quite pleased. So would I make it again? Yes I would definitely make it again and now I have made it the first time I may make it again in obviously a finer fabric that maybe has a bit more drape because I say this is curtain like curtain material so it is a little bit more sturdier. I still love the drape on this, sturdy drape and I think it fits in nice with obviously the fabric and the design so if I made it again I possibly would try the French seam method and maybe not put pockets in the side and maybe put some patch pockets on the front. I definitely make the length the length I've got now because I do like that little bit more in length in tops. I don't like tops that sit on the hip but it's definitely shorter than my normal ones because normally I go for like a smock length so this is shorter and I'm quite liking this short this shorter length for me anyway. I do like these colours too because they're very um, earthy tones and um, rustic with the dark greens and the burnt orange um, so I'd love to get another top like this in maybe in that lovely ochre mustard colour. And I think I've already got one in the dark green. So this top is going to be absolutely brilliant to go with things that I've already got. And obviously it'll go great with my jeans. A denim skirt with some tights underneath. So it's going to get well worn. Yes, yeah, so I hope you like this top as much as I do. Would you um, upcycle a curtain? Or have you, have you ever upcycled a curtain or a tablecloth or anything else? If you have, I'd love it if you could share in the comments box below what you've done. So what do you think of this top? Do you like it? I hope you do. Uh, if you did like this video, please don't forget to give me that thumbs up. And like I said, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could subscribe and follow me along on my dressmaking journey. And don't forget, I do have a sister channel, Loopy Mabel Crochet, if you love to crochet too. So please take a look over there as well. But until the next time, as I always say, please take care and happy sewing. Mm -hmm.